Hi everybody from Cleveland, Ohio. Happy Easter. I am so excited to share this special presentation with you. I'm blessed to be in this Jesuit retreat center for the Jesuit Order of Priests of the Catholic Church. This is a place where pedestrians can come and walk. It's so quiet and peaceful. So it's here that I'm going to present to you some of these songs and, and messages to encourage you, to inspire you, to remind you how much I love and appreciate you, to let you know how valuable you are, not only to me, but to the God who gave his life. We celebrate Easter this Sunday. 2.3, 2.4 billion people in the world recognize Jesus of Nazareth, the man who performed a miracle after a miracle, who died on a cross, who was buried in a tomb, and three days later conquered the grave. This is something I'm quite familiar with. I've been on an operating table. My heart died. Doctors removed it. By all means, I was dead. And yet through organ donation, the miracle that God has given us, a surgeon took the heart of another person and put that in my chest and temporarily raised me from the dead. This is happening to thousands of people all over the world. And we know nothing. We don't even know how to build pyramids. And yet, the Egyptians knew how to do it. So I don't question or doubt the idea, the concept, the reality that Jesus of Nazareth understood and was resurrected. And the good news is that death has been conquered. There is no fear. And that we ought to celebrate and be excited. Just as you see all these trees around me with all the leaves that have fallen because they've died. Come spring, it will be full again. And summer, thick, thick with life, new life. Everything that is decomposing will, with those elements, generate things that are living and new. So let's have a wonderful celebration this Easter. I'm excited to share with you these videos and some messages that help set up the videos so that we're all left encouraged and inspired. Let's have a wonderful hour and a half. God bless you. Welcome to this Easter special. My life has been one struggle than another Roads with more dead ends than I can count I have doubted everything Who I was, what I believed But I know now what life saved about Somehow when you're not promised tomorrow You hang on a little harder to Sometimes you see hope behind the sorrow That's what I saw when I saw you today So can you love a man with all the odds against him Whose life has been uphill right from the start If you can love what's left to me you can have the rest of me If you can love and be Yeah, with half a heart If you can love and be Yeah, with half a heart My life is full of stories You can't make up And we've been through some things Yeah, you and me I'm broken by 
but not beaten Still here, still breathing And with you the only place I want to be So can you love a man with all the odds against him Whose life is built up here right from the start the rest of me you can love me yeah, with half a heart oh if you can love me yeah, with half a heart you don't have to say what you don't want to cause I can see the answer in your eyes if this is one too many things Goodbye, goodbye. So can you love? There are 14 stations of the cross that the Jesuits uh, believe in, it's part of the Catholic tradition, and basically they just tell the story from the time Jesus is condemned to die until he is laid in the tomb. I'm going to add one more so we have 15 stations, the resurrection. So the first station is that Jesus was condemned unto death. This was a perfect person who really did nothing but stir, stir things up because he taught people to love those who were different, the outcasts, the misfits, those that would have been condemned to die for meaningless reasons. Well, he taught us how to love and he would die of a broken heart. So it's with that spirit that I want to present to you my song, A Broken Heart, from my album, A New Creation, for the first station of the cross. Jesus was condemned unto death.
the second station of the cross is that Jesus took up the cross. He did this voluntarily. This was something he chose to do. This is something he was born for. He said, I do it for my Father who is in heaven. So in that spirit, here is my song, Father in Heaven, about Jesus when he was back in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, preparing to do this, where he was with his Father and tempted of the devil. Here is Father in Heaven from my album, 40 Hymns for 40 Days. Number one Billboard pianist, Paul Cardall. We're celebrating three billion streams of my music worldwide, but more miraculous was the heart transplant I received here in Utah a decade ago. Thank you for your prayers and ongoing support for my music and to our Savior. He heals our hearts and gives us new life. Read Paul's full story inspired by his life in The Broken Miracle, parts one and two by J.D. Netto. This path of life that we're walking, this journey that we're going on, I don't know about you, but I fall and stumble a lot. That's the third station of the cross. Jesus, as he was carrying it, was so weak, he stumbled, he fell. You know, in life there, are, there seems to be two of us inside of us. One that wants to be really good, do the right thing, and the other that wants to rebel and just sin. And we have to decide at some point which of those masters we will serve. There's the famous story of the young boy asking the grandfather, why does he have this journey? Why does he have this war inside? And the, and the grandfather says, 
inside of you there are two wolves and the and the son says the grandson says well which one will win and the grandfather says whichever one you feed this is my song dance of the living about a young woman and her journey to control that inner part from my album peaceful piano That fourth station of the cross, something quite special, Jesus meets his mother. This is a woman who has seen his process from the time she was pregnant with him and leaving Nazareth, unsure, not knowing what was fully in the future. She understood some scripture she knew this was the Son of God. But what was that like to watch his journey? So as Jesus was walking on that pathway to Golgotha and he met his mother, what was he thinking? What was he feeling? Well, Mary represents the power of being a mom and how lonely that journey is. So here is my song, Leaving Nazareth, from my album, December.
the fifth station of the cross was seeing the weight of the cross on Jesus. Simon of Cyrene comes and helps Jesus with his cross. And I can imagine the Lord being forever thankful for what this man would do for him. How many times have people come and helped us carry the burden of our own crosses? In that spirit, this is my song, Thanksgiving, from my album, December. The sixth station of the cross is Veronica. She comes and wipes the tears off of Jesus in his sweat. The fifth station of the cross is a woman who they call Veronica. She comes from the crowd and she wipes off the sweat, the blood, and the tears of Jesus. How often have people wiped your tears and helped you. So the song I want to share with you, which I believe is one of the most important pieces of music I've ever written with David A. Bednar, is called One by One, because that's what Jesus was all about. Helping individuals one by one, one at a time. How does everybody get through the straight and narrow gate? Well, if we all try to get in at once, we just get congested and crowded. It's because God wants us to come through one at a time because we have an individual, intimate, personal relationship with Jesus of Nazareth. Here is one by one.
the seventh station of the cross. Jesus falls for the second time, collapsing. And this has got to be heartbreaking to watch those who had been healed by him, to watch him suffer the way he did. You know, I talked about the leaves on the trees, how they fall, and yet how in springtime, they tend to grow back. And by summer, they're all here again, alive and new. So it's with that spirit I share with you my song, September Winds, from my album, December. I find the eighth station of the cross to be one of the most sacred. This is where the woman comes out from the crowd. I find the eighth station of the cross to be deeply personal. This is where a woman comes out from the crowd and she touches the garment of Jesus. Jesus pauses and says, who touched me? And how did he know? He says, and it's quoted, virtue has left me. There was a woman who wanted to be healed. She believed if she just touched, just touched the, the clothing of Jesus, she would be healed. But it's interesting that Jesus says virtue has left him. 
He's so good. He's so pure. He's kept God's commandments that he has power. And where does that power come from? Virtue. Now, this makes me think of my wife because this is a strong, disciplined, wonderful woman who has so much strength. And I can't wait to put my arms around her and pull whatever virtue I can to get my own strength renewed. And that's why I wrote that song, My Heart Beats For You. So let's do that. This features David Archuleta from my album, The Broken Miracle, My Heart Beats For You. This one's for you, honey. I will not forget the day I met you Broken down inside to walk my way Like an angel in the night You filled me with light on that first day I'm not the man that you once met The day you stole my heart I was born again And I live for you until my life is through Ninth station of the cross, Jesus falls for the third time. It's interesting that the scripture talks about Jesus falling three times. You know, the whole point of him coming to earth and taking on the flesh is because mankind fell. We chose to partake of a forbidden fruit, and even though that may have been just a transgression, it brought into the world death, corruption, sin, and it took a God to come and set things right. A new creation is what he would promise, and this whole world, this earth that dies 
is brought back every spring and eventually this earth will be renewed to be God's kingdom and glory. So this is my song, A New Creation, from my album, A New Creation. things I want to do this week is take you back 10 years ago into the hospital where I was living. There were so many incredible experiences that happened to me and I just want to share those in commemoration of the fact that it's good to be alive. This first video is when Mindy Gledhill, a brilliant musician, she came up to visit. Uh, she had a question for me. She was really concerned and this was our conversation.
Take a look. Tell us again why you're not mad. Like, why aren't you mad that this has happened to you? Do you hey, more like mad at what? <laughs> Everybody asks me what, what I should be mad at. Should I be mad at somebody? Who should I be mad at? That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> no. No. Have you ever? I've never been mad. I think one person has made me angry in my lifetime. Are you going to divulge who that is on camera? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, not <right> here. <laughs> no, I've always left the room. You know, you see a pretty empty forest here. That's because we're just getting over winter. Creation is about to wake up, and as spring continues to unfold, the plants, the flowers, are born again. The Station of the Cross here is Jesus being stripped of his clothing because they're about to lay him down to nail him to a cross. And isn't that kind of like the earth? As winter comes, the entire earth is stripped of its beauty. And yet, the promise of spring, everything will come again, a new creation. All living things will rise. With that spirit, here is my song, Sleeping Flowers, from my album, December.
Both you and I know what it feels like to hurt, to have pain, grief, anger, depression. I can't even imagine what it would have been like to be stripped of your clothing, laid down on a, a rustical cross and to, and to be nailed, your hands and your feet. And that's what this station is. Jesus of Nazareth is nailed to the cross. So many of us have felt like him where we were rejected, we were abused, we've been mistreated. That and those emotions inspired a song that I've written with Tyler Glenn called I Know It Hurts. It's my hope that we can not judge people for who they are and their behavior, their traditions, their beliefs, but we can love each other instead of cast people out. This is my song with Tyler Glenn. I know it hurts from the broken miracle. out in space you just wanted to believe there were tears upon your face and your body felt no ease dear god is there not more because it's cold on the church floor oh seemed like no one here would listen but you found in pain a friend we were victims of the system Still we prayed our hearts to mend Dear God, is there not more? Cause it's cold on the church floor Oh And I know it hurts Finding you worth I know it hurts You've been through worse Feeling so small In a graveyard there were crosses, there were stained glass window doors And the church bells rang and angels sang, but the symbols were not ours Dear God, is there not more? Cause it's cold on the church floor oh. Here you find yourself a new road, and they wish that you could stay There's a faint light at the end and it's calling you away Dear God, I hope there's more Cause it's cold on the church floor Oh And I know it hurts Finding your worth I know it hurts You've been through worse Feeling so small in a big After being on the cross for hours, he finally 
gave up the ghost, voluntarily died. And this is that station. Jesus dies on the cross. I was blessed to create a song about this moment when Jesus dies. And a lot of people disagree on what happened during those three days when he dies to the time he's resurrected. But we know that he liberates those who are captives, those who are in a state of prison, those who feel damned to hell for their sins. Jesus is the great liberator. I wrote a song called Gethsemane. It's performed by Nathan Pacheco. It's in Italian, but we've translated it so you can understand the lyrics of what I was trying to say. Here is that video, Gethsemane, from my album, A New Creation. Thirteenth station of the cross is Jesus' body is taken down. And of course, there at the foot of the cross is his mom. You're a mother. What would that be like? 
I can't even comprehend it. Years ago, there was a song written called Mary Did You Know. I, I believe that Mary knew quite a bit. And even though I love that song, I wrote a piece of music that I feel gives a little more credibility to this incredible woman who gave birth to Jesus, who raised him, who had to let him go to fulfill his mission, only to have his body put back into her arms. And she still had many years to go. This is my song, Son of God, featuring Broadway star Patrice Depoki from my Christmas album.
14th station of the cross, Jesus is laid in a tomb. There his body will be until the next station. There's so much irony in all of it. He brings life, and yet he has to die. We experience life and death here. It's not easy. And yet we cannot know joy without understanding exquisiting pain. I lost my brother while I was waiting for a heart transplant. It's probably one of the most difficult things I've ever been through in my life. This is why I took that theme from Michael Giacchino from the show Lost called Life and Death. And I gave more life to it because Jesus, he conquered the grave. Here is Life and Death from my album, A New Life.
Jesus of Nazareth conquered the grave. He rose from the dead, breaking the bands of death for everything. Out of the ashes, everything will rise. All that is dead will be restored. I truly believe this. When I wrote Gracie's theme, I had no idea the impact it would have all over the world, reminding people how beautiful, how fragile life is, that in our grief, we can find healing, we can find peace, we can find joy in their memory. But I want to take that to another level. I believe we'll be reunited with those we've lost. That is the promise of Jesus of Nazareth. Some believe it was a story, others a great myth. For me, he's a God who weeps, who bleeds, who died, who conquered the grave. Jesus of Nazareth for me is hope. Thank you for joining me. Here is Gracie's theme. Have a wonderful Easter.